Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 10, 32 to 10, 42. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Welcome everybody once again. Glad that you guys are uh, with us. We have a lot to unpack today. We've been going through the book of Matthew. Uh, uh, If you're new here, what we like to do sometimes is we like to just start at one of the books and just go through it. And that's the passage that we are. It's a little bit long. Uh, To put it into context, Jesus is trying to, um, in a sense, rally the troops. He has his disciples, and he's getting them kind of prepared to go and help spread that message of what he has brought, that message of love and kindness and all of that stuff. And he's given them the authority to do it, but he's also... Uh, telling them the truth of what's happening. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the things that he was saying, you know, um, you can do this. Your, your honest self is who I want you to be. I want you to go out there. I want you to represent people. I want you to be there for people. And now it's, he's kind of talking a little bit about um, things to be mindful of as well. He, he's telling people um, that uh, there's, it's not going to be loving and easy all the time there's going to be some, some resistance to this. Uh, he's actually quoting, in, in a, in when he talks about uh, people against people, uh, he's kind of quoting something. Like if I said, um, uh, I once was blind, but uh, now I see, uh, you'd know that I'm, I'm quoting uh, the, the theme, uh, the song Amazing Grace. Jesus would do this. Sometimes we, we forget that when we read it today, but he's actually, at the time, he's, he's talking to, especially this time, he's talking to people of the, uh, the Jewish uh, faith. So he's quoting here, uh, the, he's actually quoting Micah, uh, which was an old prophet, and this is what it says. For the son uh, treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The enemies are members of your own household, but as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. So by him saying that uh, households will turn against households and all that stuff, the people that are listening to him, they, they get that. They know what he's saying. He's actually kind of quoting a song. And like when I, when I quote a song, you, uh, and if you know that song, your mind kind of goes there, right? You know the bigger picture of this. And this is what Jesus was doing by quoting just a little bit. He's telling people, giving them hints of this bigger picture. And what was going on during Micah's time is when Micah w- was talking about this, he was talking about how people will be resistant to any time that God is doing something new. And that's kind of the world we live in right now. Jesus was 2,000 years ago, he was telling them, I'm doing something uh, that is going to surprise people. Because people had been living in the tradition that that God is this and all this kind of stuff. And Jesus is saying, God is actually here. God is actually with you. And God is about letting people into the kingdom of heaven. It's about going and healing those that need to be healed. It's about feeding those that need to be fed. It's about sharing love with the world. Doesn't that sound like it would be fun and nice? But believe it or not, there was resistance to that, as there is now. Any time that we show that love and kindness and uh, acceptance and and just uh, being there for one another, believe it or not, people get threatened by this. We've turned sometimes the the church into a a powerful thing. And this was not uh, any different than it was 2,000 years ago. 
There were people that were threatened by the, the, uh, the open door policy because it kind of threatened their, it threatened their power a little bit. You know, there were religious leaders that were very comfortable with what they had been doing for years and years and years. And that was, I'm in charge, you listen to me, uh, I get the bigger house, you live in poverty. And that's the way it was. And if there's an affliction against you, or if there's like an illness or something like that, God must be angry at you, and you're not really allowed in our, in our worship area. So Jesus comes in, and he starts doing something that is completely out of line from what they're, they're used to. He's all about, uh, keep that door open. He's all about the people that you think God is angry with, those are the ones I'm going to be having dinner with. He's all about the people that you think that uh, have an affliction because they are being punished in some way, I'm going to heal them, and I'm going to remove that barrier. He's all about love. We've turned religion into something that does not represent love, and that is what Jesus was about 24-7. Love. I want, you to, I, want, I want us to have that in our hearts so much that when we belch, we belch love. <laughs> that's what I want in this world. Love and kindness. Because that's what Jesus was about. And people didn't like it. There are people that we, as, as, as Christians, as, as people of faith, I, I, I've, I've mentioned this before, you often hear Christians say, I will give my life for you. And they sound like that. I don't know why, but they just, they go nasal. They just say, I will give my life for you. But I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to sit with somebody that I don't know. I don't want to sit with somebody that looks or acts different than I do uh, or comes from a different place. Uh, I, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to share my stuff with people of a different status or whatever. I, I don't really want to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll put money in, in maybe and I'll put it in an envelope and I'll send it off somewhere to help them. But I don't want them in the church. And for years, the church has done exactly that. You know, we are uh, under the, the, the denomination title uh, of uh, United Methodist. I, I'm, uh, denominations are, we have people from all different denominations here, and I respect that and love that. Uh, the person that founded the Methodist uh, was a, name, a guy named John Wesley. And I loved it. He was like four feet tall. So I'd be t I, would, I would actually be taller than John Wesley. Yeah, he was great. And so uh, short people, they got reason. He, his biggest thing was at the Church of England that he was serving at that time. They would have um, people that were worshiping inside, but they would have poor people uh, starving uh, just outside of the church. People that actually wanted to hear the, the word of God. They, actually, they really wanted to learn about uh, the, the Christian faith, but the church wouldn't let them in because they didn't fit a certain standard. And John Wesley was about, uh, no, I'm going to go outside where they are, and I'm going to preach to them. He did the uncomfortable thing. He went out there, and he sat with them. Uh, there was one time he even uh, preached on a tombstone, a little dramatic, I thought, but he, he just um, would, it, it was all about going and being with the people. His brother, Charles Wesley, was a, a songwriter, and the hymns, some, some of them that we actually sing today, uh, what he would do is he would take the, the pop song of that day and he would just change the lyrics to it because it was easier for people to learn the song. And so people that were around that time with John Wesley, they looked at the things that were going on and they thought that John Wesley was a madman. Why are you doing this? Why are you going out there and preaching to these people? Uh, and why are you changing songs so it's easier for people that uh, work in the mines and all this kind of stuff? Why, why are you even bothering with them? We have the church here where people are uh, dressed nice and they have a good income. They support the church and all this kind of stuff. Why are you going out there and, and doing that stuff? And John Wesley was saying, uh, because I'm a Christian and I follow Jesus. 
And Jesus is about this. Uh, it's amazing how much we've lost our way on that, and that's what Jesus was warning his disciples then. I truly believe that the Bible lives and breathes. And when I say that, what I mean is we can read things there that are little notes, little messages that God is sending to us today, 2,000 years later. And what God is saying is there will be some resistance to this. But if you welcome the least of these, you're welcoming me. Um, if, you, um, if you tell them that you are, if you are a follower of me, uh, I'll tell my, my father about you. If you're not, I won't. That sounds really harsh in our today. We like to smooth over those things. But what Jesus is saying is, if you are going to represent me, please make sure you do. Because if you're doing a weird thing, I'm not going to know what you're doing. And, and, I'm, and, and it's not going to be truly represented of, of me. And the message that he says, okay, so if we, if we say, okay, what is a Christian follower? What, what did Jesus do? Well, everything, every gospel, the thing that they have in common is that Jesus was out there, just like the John Wesley learned from, he was out there with folks. He didn't just go to the synagogue. He wasn't on a world tour. He didn't just go onto the stage and preach to the people that were just there. He went outside, and if they were hungry, he fed them. If they were hurting, he healed them. He shared love. He shared love and kindness. That, that's, that's really how simple it is. We really think that Christianity has got to be so confusing and, and everything like this. We have Bible studies that scare people because they think, oh, I've got to be a scholar in order to sit down with this. When Jesus was saying, actually, you know what you need to do? You just need to take your butt and you need to put it down with people and welcome them. That's it. Just love them. That is really it. It's more difficult to raise a dog than it is to follow Jesus. <laughs> Unfortunately, with religion, we're still picking up the crap, though. <laughs> if we are truly following Christ, that's what he was mentioning to his disciples. If you are going to go out there and represent me, make sure that you're representing me. And be warned. That loving attitude, that kindness, that focus on just the kingdom of heaven and God loves you, is going to scare people, and they're going to fight you on it. We, we've tried to turn the, the, the Scripture and the Bible and our religion and everything into a place that uh, is all about authority. And we try to say that, we're, that we, we are in authority. Uh, we, we have people that, are, that turn the phrase of, I've not come to bring peace but a sword. We've, t we've had people that have turned that into, take up your sword and fight anyone that looks at you differently. Take up your sword and fight anything that is, is not like you because it's a threat to Christianity. Folks, that's not what Jesus was saying. It never was. Jesus, who allowed himself to be captured and beaten, and hung. It was never about take up your sword. It truly was about, uh, we live in a violent world. You're going to have resistance. Beware of that. But it's not, the, the, the sword is not the way to fight it. Love is the way to fight it. And for some reason, we've lost that authority. We, we, we balk sometimes at the thought of um, uh, following Jesus. Whenever we read passages where it says that Jesus is in charge, uh, sometimes we've liked to reword that for some reason. And, and I'm not sure why we do. You know, people say, well, you know, isn't everything and all that stuff. Well, I, uh, for me, I'm a Christian, and what I truly believe, what I truly, truly believe is that Christ is in charge. And the one thing that Christ told me was to love people. He told me not to judge because he's, that's his job. Uh, and he told me um, to be there for others. And he also told me not to be afraid. That's who I follow. And so I, I, I believe that there are people that are uh, of, of uh, all different types. 
And Jesus, the message that he gave is he hung on the cross for all of us because he's in charge. Sometimes we like to to take that charge to ourselves, and we like to turn it into a, a thing of power. We love to have our Christian faith be something of power. I'm right, you're wrong. Whatever side of the political spectrum we are, we love to stand on the other side and say, aren't those people stupid? And we love to hate them. There were people in Jesus' time of all political sides, all different cultures, all different faiths. And many of them that were there when he gave his life. Jesus said, don't judge, don't be afraid. He never said, yeah, but. He never said, forgive them, but yeah, but not them or them. He would upset his own disciples by uh, healing like a centurion's son, the enemy. The actions that Jesus was talking about is there is no politics, it's love. Plain and simple. It's, it's that Thanksgiving dinner when you sit down with your uncle who just writes things that are just crazy on the internet and you just focus on the football team. That's it, just focus on the football team. And for that moment, you can share something that is other than politics and you actually get along. We have dining tables in different rooms. Not true. We do have this problem even today. When Jesus is saying there will be friction, he wasn't just talking about us versus them. He was talking about us. That's why he's mentioning that it's going to happen in your own homes. It's going to happen whenever you are talking about Jesus being in charge and love and all that stuff, kindness, acceptance. It's going to cause friction. Be mindful of that, but know that I'm in charge. I got this. I've got this covered. Sometimes we, we have that, that's the biggest problem that we have in our Christian faith is that we forget that God's got this. We like to do it ourselves. We like to call our own shots. We, we think that we are more talented. We are more skilled. We have more going on with us. This is my uh, lovely wife right there. She's around the corner running the camera swearing because I'm going all, all over the place and she's trying to track me. Oh, that dirty, rotten son of a... But uh, for me, this is the best person I know and the most beautiful person I've ever met. The other day I thought, wouldn't it be great if I took this image and I could paint a, a portrait of her? So I got out the, the stuff... <laughs> And I thought, if I could just paint a portrait of her. Now, I've never had a lesson. And it shows. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. It's, it's like Ellen met Dom DeLuise or something. I'm not sure what, what that was. This is us when we try to do things. Uh, by ourselves, and we don't have that, that, all the skill. We can have the best in, in, intentions. We can go at it. But without learning some things, without the lesson, we might misrepresent what the image truly is. That's the image. This is what we're saying it is. It reminds me of, oh, this right here, yeah. You remember that? This was a an old painting, and they hired somebody that did not have very much skill at painting to fix it. And she painted on the actual painting. They call this monkey Jesus now. They do. This is, this is real. She um, had the best intention, but she ruined a 16th century painting by trying to fix it without the skill. Now, when that happens, it's common sense. When you see the painting that I made and you see the painting that she made, it's really easy to say, you should have let somebody that knew what they were doing do this. Somebody that can paint a bigger picture. Somebody that knows how to create beauty that we could never touch. 
is it okay for us to say, I'm going to, I'm going to let, I'm going to let God be in charge because uh, I can try my best and the best thing that I can do is do, I'm going to follow what God tells me to do. I'm going to, I'm going to follow that because if I try to do it on my own, I get mixed up in the power and the controlling and the hatred Without God, our thoughts turn to things like bigotry and putting people down and insecurity and fear. This is us trying to live this life without God in our lives. And God is saying, look what I did. And I gave you the instructions. When Jesus said, they'll know that you're my disciples by how much you love each other. That's the one instruction that he wanted to make sure that they got. They will know that you represent me when you love. Maybe we should try just that. Instead of painting the world ourselves, maybe we should follow that. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, We have so much in this world. We have division. We have uh, insecurity. We have things that just we don't understand. Help us to help us to simplify our lives and our hearts by just saying, "Okay, uh, Jesus just tells me to love. I'm going to love today." Help me to learn to do that, not only to to love others, but help me to love myself. Sometimes that's the hardest part. Help me to see the world as you see the world and help me to see myself as you see me and help me to see my neighbor as you see my neighbor. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. When we leave here today, we're going to turn on our phones, we're going to turn on uh, the news, we're going to turn on TV shows, and you're going to hear voices saying, you've got to pick a side, and your side's got to be this, and you've got to hate that. In order to be this, you've got to hate that. I want us all to just breathe a sigh of relief and know that the one that created the universe is telling you there's more to that. There's more than life than that. There's more to life than that. He said it much better than I just did. The key to our world being better is not hating someone else. It's never worked. From the start, it has never worked. That's why Jesus said the key is to love your neighbor. I hope we can do that. Our mission at Neighbors is quite simple and it's very, very biblical. Love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. May we do that today.